point here, but <laughs> do we have everyone or oh, Christopher joined as well? Okay, we do have everyone right now, right? Um, okay, let me open our talk. So I actually like added, um, I, I tried to like grasp um, kind of like the bigger picture as part of that comment. Um, and I tried to like understand as part of that comment, the implications to data migration, implications to uh, what actually this feature that we may do are gonna bring uh, to the to the like to the table uh, because like serving from the zip is not something uh, new because like we do that for quite amount of time but it's definitely something new for uh, github pages and it was like this kind of interesting idea that i had like two years ago uh, i then one year ago created proof of concept it kind of had very good performance characteristic. It provides basically the uh, equivalent performance of serving directly, uh, but it had actually a, a bunch of uh, interesting upsides with some minor downsides that could be, uh, let's say, um, improved over time. Uh, but the like, general idea behind this zip serving is uh, basically like this my perception, like two, the two biggest problem is like data migration, uh, the current GitHub page structure that I brought in the past for the majority, uh, it's pretty broken, uh, it's fair to say. Like uh, the data, how it's stored on the disk, uh, it's not very well structured. Um, it, it has like, you have to manage a lot of small files, you do it on the NFS, uh, the removal, uh, removal, deploy procedure is kind of clumsy. Um, we do all of that like using side key, uh, side key uh, like loads the zip file into the process. Uh, it creates increased memory consumption. We then uh, like unpack, we fix some different vulnerabilities around that so because we move that, uh, those the reason why we move that into side key. Um, and there is also like the overhead of managing that from the main GitLab race application because you kind of have GitLab race managing um, like the deployment procedure, but you have GitLab pages reading the data. I mean, that structure had some origins why it was done that way. Uh, if you, if, if someone is interested, I can like shed more light why it was done like that. Uh, but now after time, it's like, it didn't survive its time. Uh, so I, I'm kind of like my perception is like uh, it's the data migration for me is like the hardest part. Um, and one of the things that um, I learned is like the GitLab pages is pretty flexible. And if we could somehow maintain that complexity of GitLab pages in GitLab pages, like removing from uh, GitLab rays all this heavy lifting of like uh, running this deploy, even a side key, it's, it's kind of pretty challenging even today because a side key can be killed at any time. This process gets interrupted. It causes hardware, like we probably have a ton of leftovers on the storage that we are not even like accounting. Um, so like my perception was like uh, trying something different, trying something fresh, um, that opens more possibilities in the future. And um, I, I'm actually like got interested about this subject today. I, I, I look at artifacts because pages is being used exclusively by the CI artifacts. And I look at the pages deployment and we have 50% of the source data uh, today as part of the artifacts that if you would today start serving from the zip, we would be able to handle 50% of our GitLab pages to be serving right from the zip that is already stored on our storage. It's stored in the compressed form. It's stored as a single file uh, that can be pretty, pretty well random uh, accessed. There is like this second half, another 50%, uh, but the second half, the, another 50% is 
basically um, rerun your pages job. You, you rerun your pages job, we're gonna then steal your artifact as a zip in that form. We're not gonna even like have to reprocess that because we're gonna use that as is. And we, we it's kind of like you can consume that right away. So um, from that perspective, like I kind of assume that zip will be a, a way to make pages kind of disconnected from race significantly. It's, 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 it's become even more disconnected now because we recently introduced pages API abstraction of something named serving. Uh, serving provides you a, a layer where you can define a very specific behavior that pages gonna execute for you. And it could be the current servings that we have is like serve files from the disk. This is the structure that you should be looking for. Um, but another abstraction that we introduced in the pages for serving uh, for the uh, Kubernetes integration is like some kind of port mapping or pro reverse proxy that is fully configurable. So serving give us a lot of flexibility, uh, but also serving give us um, a bunch of other stuff. And like, I was thinking about the zip because if we could serve from zip, it opens a ton of interesting use cases. Like www.github.com is an example of our page. We have a dedicated server for uh, creating review apps. If you would be able to use the CI and the artifact as is, this artifact, we already saw that artifact in the system. We could basically kind of provide something that no one else has on the market for, for product asset pages. We just provide you review app for every match request that you have. And it's seamless. It works right off the box. You don't need to unpack store anything. It's, 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 I mean, it's not a goal like in the first iteration, but this kind of like gives you that possibility of easily introducing that because you already scared zip serving to the um, like high concurrency, maybe slightly higher memory usage. So it's already prepared. You're already serving from the file storage or object storage, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's some kind of archive that you're accessing. It doesn't really matter how you're accessing that archive. It matters that you can read chunks of that archive. Um, and it kind of gives you a lot of uh, possibilities of using that uh, for the ways that like we cannot use pages today. And there was some issue in the past, hey, provide me GitLab preview apps on pages, but like our answer was like, we cannot provide you because of how pages is working. Um, so I'm kind of like thinking that zip could be something that allow us to avoid data migration uh, by like using CI. I mean, we could use that method in every solution taken because CI is flexible. Uh, second, kind of provide us an additional opportunities to extend our product in a ways that we cannot do it today because of the how pages was designed. Uh, but the third, I think it's also pretty important, is like if we start holding the source data uh, and find that some of the methods be uh, insufficient in performance, we have that source data available that we can then do something different with that source data uh, because uh, the main reason, like, like the main impact of that change is like uh, pages would be serving data from the source data. Uh, and now how we consume that source data later, it's really up to us. If we at some point find that zip doesn't scale, we may start unpacking that for the most frequent pages, uh, like at the cost of additional storage, uh, because like zip allows you to store this data pretty efficiently. Like a lot of pages are basically HTML. PNG maybe is not very good to compress because it's really compressed, uh, but it kind of tries to balance uh, the space efficiency, trading a little of the memory efficiency, but trying to provide a little of the same uh, serving characteristic. I mean, serving characteristic is not exactly the same because you have some maybe initial latency on getting this uh, zip structure in the first place. But also there's another aspect is zip is as any type of the solution is a virtual basically file system. 
you never work on the file system directly. You always run that within a virtual structure. So one of the, uh, there are a number of the security, in, like security specific features built in pages like Ceha root to prevent some, issue, some, some programming errors that we introduce. Uh, there were like probably three or, three or four security issues related to symlink handling, basically symlink traversal that kind of we survived just because we run in the Ceha route. But now like the security uh, features, they are not really needed anymore for, for securing your file system access because you never really give user direct access to the file system. You rather give them access to some kind of virtual structure uh, that contains, I mean, it's not really the problem if you would be serving directly from the object storage, but it would still be like a challenge if you would be serving that from the uh, file system. So uh, this was probably like the, the, the main reasons why uh, zip is tempting uh, because um, it tries to avoid a lot of problems that we have today. Uh, it tries to keep like single way of doing stuff because the file system or object storage is the same way of behavior. Uh, it tries to like always have these source data, uh, but kind of opens us a way um, to um, have much different ways of like um, accessing, uh, let's say, I mean, using pages for the different purposes that we, we may have. Um, I, I try to catch that in my comment, like trying to provide some different bullet points. But it's not probably super exhaustive uh, uh, on all angles uh, and all like architectural complexities are uh, probably like some blank spots to, to figure out. But I kind of think that uh, I, I got surprised that we have already 50% of like artifacts already that we could be using today without doing any major like work. And uh, it kind of seems to me to be promising way because um, I, I guess it really depends like what is our focus. If, if we care about cloud native for the new installations, it works right away. You have, our, we already have artifacts. There are some discussions like how we want to manage uh, this artifact. Um, but we already have these, like the solution to storing them on the, of the object storage. Uh, GitLab pages already accesses GitLab or like some other sources. So it's already some kind of established. So then like, maybe I'm oversimplifying that, but then we are really left on saying to pages, hey pages, here is your data in the zip archive. Just serve this data to the user. And uh, like, side key race, they do not understand what is in this archive. They just hold that archive and provide the kind of like links where to access this archive. Pages doesn't really have to extract data. It's just fetches that as it is. Um, as for like the performance, like there's this initial latency, but um, maybe we need more testing in this solution, but I mean, on average case, it's like not visible. It would be not visible to the users, uh, but it would be also kind of like provide like way more to extend pages in the future for much, uh, let's say uh, something that no one else has on the market, which is, I, I think, review apps for pages, which is like nice to have, but definitely not something that we should be doing and focusing internally. So, uh, I mean, I mean this was kind of my fundamental sorry. thinking from, from two years ago that I had like um, in the one year ago. I need to ask you two questions that are Im immediately popping up, regardless of what solution we end up going with. Um, did we estimate whether we even need all this additional functionality? It was nice to have, but it's, it feels like you ain't gonna need it type of thing. Yes, you might at certain points, but right now the problem is that Pages is preventing us from scaling further. Pages is preventing our customers from using them the way they want to use Pages. So do we know whether we need all of this? 
I, I know that there were open issues about that uh, with some moderate uh, thumbs up. Um, I cannot answer it to you like myself directly. I, I know there were like uh, these things popping up at random times from, from different people. Um, and it was not only internally, but also externally. I, I just don't know how much people care about that now. Uh, but I, I kind of like consider this as a nice outcome of like of that solution. It just gives you that possibility for free. Um, but like, as I'm saying, I, I don't know exact number. I know that it was popping up at random times. And um, the second question is, assuming that you're not going to be the one writing this feature, um, that it's going to be Jaime and Vladimir 50% of the time, what kind of timeline do we expect to see the fully finished um, migration, um, given that there was already some migration done previously by uh, Jaime and Vladimir? Uh, I, I don't know who should be answering that question. I have my It doesn't have to be you. It can be Vladimir or Nicole. <laughs> yeah, I can try. Uh, actually, it's kind of hard to estimate, but if we, uh, like narrow this down to a question, how much zip is slow in us, then basically Jaime already has a POC for serving from it. And it's like, uh, I don't know, 100 lines of specific two pages code, which does it. So actually zip doesn't uh, add much complexity. And from the my side, I would say that this, uh, like I agree with Camille that migration of just like, just freezing the artifacts from removal and using them is much easier than any type of migration to object storage like what about what about existing sites pages sites that we don't have an artifact zip for again i agree with camille's idea that we just need to give users a time frame and ask them to uh basically rebuild uh, and yeah, also like we're going to throw well, them away. So, so Jakob, I, I was thinking about something like that because, like, from what I understand from the scalability point of view, the biggest objective is it's untangle rays from the NFS. I, I mean, I, I mean, th th this is my perception. Like, we want to disconnect rays from the NFS, not just not rails with GitLab. Yes, right? but well, like, everything. Like, yes, no, no I mean, NFS I mean, anywhere. It, Yes, I, I mean everything, but like, uh, I, I mean, if you would say that we want to disconnect race in the next three months from the NFS, uh, I, I, let's let's not think about the timeline. If you want to disconnect race from the NFS in X amount of time, some kind of number, uh, like with the zip and even partial artifacts, we could do it. We would just require all new deployments uh, to be using zip. Uh, pages during that period could still use NFS, but it would be only pages accessing this NFS. And then maybe uh, in the Y amount of time, which would be the larger number than X, we would say uh, we would reach these projects, maybe with some pop-up messaging or whatever, please rerun the CI job to update your pages deployment. And after this Y amount of time, we would disconnect NFS from pages and pages would be then fully cloud native. So we would delete their data. So we're not migrating data because we just delete it. I think that's an interesting choice for gitlab.com. And I also wonder if that's an appropriate choice for self-managed installations. So I, I, I don't know about the timeline um, when it could be happen, uh, but I would also find, I would also be able to find a way, uh, I mean, I, I could also think about the way that you could use side key and race to try to uh, build the zip archive used by pages from the existing data, if this would be strongly required. And like, it, if, if you would serve it from the zip, basically there, there could be like a race job that would try to pack existing data as a zip and store that on the object storage. This could be an alternative way of processing that for the uh, pages deployment that we don't have zip. You then kind of traverse this subpath uh, that you only need. Yeah, that makes more sense to me. 
that's or that's what I was expecting. I was surprised when we said that we would just delete them. So I, I guess this is like the third possibility uh, in that model uh, that could be additionally implemented. Um, uh, and probably it would be even pretty simple as well to do it because you would have access to existing data. You had a question, Clyde, did you want to verbalize that? Yeah, okay. Actually, my comments like mostly answered. So, uh, object storage kind of currently optional uh, was meant to uh, ask like if uh, users may disable it. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, I get the answer. Basically, yeah, it it is optional. Uh, yeah. Next question is basically. Do I get it right that we simultaneously can have artifacts uh, stored on disk and in object storage until users run the migration? Like this uh, rake task, GitLab artifacts migrate. Is it correct? Yes. So basically, like the API can return whatever serving you want. So basically, we can have very seamless transition, even like behind the feature flag for the very limited amount of the users to still search from zip or from the direct disk. If we migrate them, we could then switch them to zip. So it's like fully erase controlled that process on, on how we are serving data and from where we are serving this data. Uh, I, I mean, this is probably like the beauty of the current uh, pages API that we implemented uh, at the beginning of that year, that um, race doesn't have to control where this data is stored and how it's being served but race controls uh, from where like it's being served. And it could be like different definitions. It could be like mixed match, as you are saying. We could be serving project A within the same, so uh, sorry, we could be serving project A within the subdomain from the file system, project B from the object storage. And it's fully, it's like the current architecture is pretty flexible on, on that, the API implementation that we, that we did. Yeah, thanks. And I will just basically restate your uh, answer for the second one. Uh, as I understand it, the like the best idea in your head is to just preserve current artifacts and don't make any specific structure. Like basically don't uh, copy them to any other storage, but preserve them from uh, expiring and being deleted with a pipeline and stuff just to leverage already existing like migration methods and all that stuff. That's right. I mean, uh, is that right? So I, I don't know about that. I think it's open to discussion about like to us understand what would be easier. I, I could see like the both ways really. Uh, but I guess like it, it would like, if we choose either of these ways, I, I don't think that this adds extra complexity uh, to that. It like, I, I think we, we, would, we would have to like spend some uh, moments on like investigating which would be better way but in any case um, I, I don't think that this choice is a deal breaker uh, for us because like it would be very simple on, on like achieving either of those if we would have to yeah I agree I guess we can start with uh, artifacts already existed ones and then like a bit later, we can think about copying them if we need to. So, so I, I, I'm kind of worried about the artifacts because of the life cycle. And I'm worried that someone could delete that artifact for you. And I don't know exactly how we would approach that problem to ensure that it never happens. So I guess I would look at uh, what would be the uh, downsides and risks associated if you would use the existing artifacts. I mean, the uh, artifacts that we have stored, because if we would reuse, there is a risk that someone makes a mistake and makes the pages to be into S1 type of the problem. Um, and I think like we should wait uh, the decision based on that. If, if we find that it's better like to copy that into some permanent storage uh, that kind of makes a separate abstraction how we, how we manage life cycle of the data, I think we should we should consider that. Uh, it's just I, I don't think that this is the deal breaker even to do the first iteration. Uh, but I would consider that 
to make it to, to consider this production already to have this actually figure out because uh, we could reuse existing data uh, in the testing period to ensure that uh, like what we do on pages is stable in either of the forms but to consider this like to be actually production ready I, I would I would assume that we have this actually uh, outcat acknowledge kind of guarded uh, persisted I don't know whatever it takes to, to ensure uh, that uh, this concern is result of the life cycle of the data, life cycle of management of the data, basically. Yeah, I do agree. I meant mostly like on the POC level, just start with the current artifacts and then, yeah. Uh, okay, so basically you answered about the JLN uh, on, in your first comment. So yeah, we can remove it if we use zip. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, and yeah, obviously, if we copy it, or then we st uh, still use this deploy build, magic deploy build. But yeah, I guess it doesn't add much complexity. Uh, yeah, the next question was, uh, does it make sense to only use pages directory from the uh, artifact archive uh, and uh, remove everything else in case of like users? simultaneously adding many other artifacts uh, in the same build? Uh, so I guess. Uh, I, I guess it depends. It seems like the pre-optimization, um, but what you really want to do to optimize the more usage is like to uh, hold links to only what is relevant to you, right? So I guess, uh, yes. I'm just not sure if it's worth to like to repack. If, if this is the question. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, that is exactly the question. I, I also not sure about it. Uh, but actually, I think most of the user users will just only have public directory. So yeah, I guess we can start without copying stuff. At least that would be my opinion. Uh, yeah, Jakob, you have a next proposal. Oh, yeah. Um... Sorry, I only added this uh, about an hour ago, but um, the the questions about the zip files got me thinking like, um, uh, what will the alternative look like? And I think it'd be interesting if uh, to, to make that a bit more concrete. So I spent some time thinking about what an alternative approach could be. And uh, the basic idea of the alternative approach is that we change as little as possible at, about how Pages works today. So from the outset, it has a very different perspective. That is, Pages works, and we keep it as much as uh, the way it is as much as we can. And uh, the central idea is that I found a Go library that uh, abstracts different um, object storage um, platforms. So you can use one library and it can talk to S3 or Google Clouds or Azure, and it works the same way. And the really nice thing is that you can also give it a directory on disk. And then you use the library and you think you're using objects, but it's actually storing them on disk. So the idea is that uh, if we move things around a little bit, then uh, existing installations can keep all their data exactly where it is. Uh, and our code in pages just accesses it via this library as if they are objects. So then you have one way of working with, with things, which is uh, loose, loose objects, so one object per file. And it would work for uh, both for object storage and for local disk. And there would be no migration except for people who want to change what they store on. So if people are on disk now, they don't have to do anything. If people are on disk now and they want to start using S3, then they need to do uh, an online migration process, which would be similar to saying we look for the existing directories and put them in zip files. It would be we look for existing directories and make sure that they're in object storage. So that's the same sort of idea. Um, but uh, that, that everything would be as much as possible as it is now. So. Uh, a CI job creates a zip file that goes into an artifact storage. Then a psychic job comes in and takes that zip file and extracts things from the zip file and uploads them to object storage. Although that might also be an upload to the local disk, but it would look the same. 
and uh, then Pages just reads from object storage. So it's the same model. Pages is, is, has read-only access to its storage, and Psychic is in charge of putting things there and deleting things from there. Um, that, that, that's the idea. I can explain more, but I'm not sure if, uh, that, if that's what, what to explain or what to talk about. So like, I mean, it's, it's like the current model, uh, probably we would be changing the, where we actually store the data paths, because this is something that probably we should improve. Uh, but like, it kind of works as it is today. And the only difference would be that likely we would move uh, in your proposal, the deployment from like being internally in the race process, because inter this is internally in the race process into probably like separate go rank. Uh, by now yeah that would be the nicest solution because then you can use the same library and and like we would basically shell out to this library to perform uh, this deploy as part of the site key yeah job as it is uh, today yeah um, and uh, this like from what I kind of understood like this um, dedicated binary would try to likely perform some kind of sync operation to be um, it doesn't even have to be a sync because the current model, well, right now we do something fancy with Ruby, but we used to do unzip, I think. Um, so uh, yes, but, well, you know how to open a zip file on, uh, like, like when we send an artifact from Workhorse, right? So we can give a pre-signed URL to this binary and it can loop through the entries. And if it likes an entry, it can push it to object storage. Okay, because like uh, I, I'm kind of asking about that because um, it it kind of it also makes a kind of difference, maybe not initially, like whether we would be sending all or what is new. Uh, well, the, cur the, the current status is that we ex always extract everything, right? We don't extract the new things. We extract the entire public directory of the zip, and then we tell pages to start serving that directory. Yes. And, and, and I, I mean, like we do that because we can kind of perform a kind of atomic replace, basically. So the idea there is that you would have uh, records in SQL in Rails for deployments. And uh, so you would have a unique uh, string that identifies each deployment. And then in the zip example, Pages needs to know where the current zip file is. In my example, Pages needs to know that directory where the current deployment is. That's so like instead of upload, right? Sorry, that it would upload into this directory. And yeah. So first you upload into this directory with a unique are... name, and then you tell Pages from now on start serving from that unique name. So that sort of simulates what the atomic rename does, except you don't need to do an atomic rename. And, and then, like after some time, it would perform some kind of cleanup of this hot path, basically. Yeah. To yeah. Delete, to delete the old data. Okay. Yeah, and it would have a and it would have a SQL record, so you could even have a psychic cron job that looks for stale pages deployments in the database mm -hmm. and then deletes them. And when it comes to doing an online migration, um, because I haven't talked about that, but if you would want to migrate, you could have a situation where you tell Rails to deploy to two places at once, so both to disk and to object storage. And uh, then you would need a rake task that looks at all the things on disk that are not on object storage yet. And this is a little bit like looking at all the things that don't have a zip in the other proposal. So uh, for a while you upload everything twice and you make sure that everything in the old location also shows up in the new location if it's not already there. And then once that task is done and finds nothing new anymore, then you remove the second look. Well, then you tell pages to start reading from the new location, you remove the old location, and then you've migrated your data. And that would be a process that the administrators would have to supervise, but it, it's only something they would do if they wanted to actually move their data. Or, or, or just kind of like assume that CI just, just does that for you. Like maybe, because like I, I kind of propose this data migration, but if you would somehow make it visible to, I don't know, on-premise administrators, hey, these are the pages that are being deployed in the old format, like provide them like a tool to reach to the people, this could be like an easier way to migrate the data. I mean, migrate by the I, Well, for us, it doesn't make sense to try to reach all the people who have old data. We, that, that, that could be thousands of people. It makes more sense if we just migrate it for them and don't 
bother them and their site keeps working. Yes, and, 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 and to be fair, like, I, I, I got like this 50%, but I didn't look exactly when like this artifact was deleted because maybe we had this artifact, but it did expire and maybe like a, a, a number of these projects is actually like still some kind of living and they will, it's not gonna be 50%, but maybe if you would look over time span of like two or three months, it would rather go into 80 or 90% uh, as for the artifacts because people would naturally, I mean on gitlab.com, would naturally some, every sometime like redeploy that. I, I just look at the data that we actually had uh, in this my snippet, but it was at this specific point in the time, but I, I was not able to look at the, let's say, how many deploys that happen uh, for all these projects within the last three months, because it kind of gives you then slightly different perspective because like now 50% is pretty big number, but if it's like goes down to 10 or 5%, then maybe it's not a really that big number to, to ask these people to redeploy that. So, so I, I, I kind of like- How many users do we have from gitlab.com? In the order of millions, right? So 5% of a million is still a lot of people. No, I, I'm not talking about the users. I'm talking about the projects. We had, we had 200, uh, sorry, 200 something thousand of projects that did ever deploy GitHub pages. So uh, out of that list, and there is very likely that some users have many projects. I, I, I didn't look at that, uh, but let's assume that this is like 50,000 users. Now, if, if we would maybe get this number to like 1,000 or 5,000 users, then it's not really like that severe anymore like to, to ask these users to, to like redeploy their CI job. Um, well, it's, that's one way to put it. I, to me, it still sounds like telling them that we're going to delete their data unless they redeploy. I mean, yes, like another way like we could provide like a, 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 a script like in my proposal to zip and bundle that and store that zip and it would be, uh, it would work as well, right? If, if we don't want to reach to users. Right? Like, I, in, in both cases, we have possibilities how to handle yeah. that, basically. <laughs> Actually, I think we like can focus on the difference between two approaches and uh, basically like downside for Zip is a little of complexity on the, on the side of pages daemon, uh, just reading this zip header and adding a little code to handle zip. Uh, and uh, for the uh, storing uh, files directly on the object storage, the downside is uh, like handling more complex uh, structure, uh, file structure on in the object storage, handling more complex deletion, uh, yeah, and uh, but it's the same. It, it's the same deletion and structure we have now, right? Or is there something that makes it more complex than how it works now? I mean, we uh, we need to a little change how we handle that them now. As you said, basically, we need to replace. Uh, currently, we have a hierarchical structure with like group name, subgroup, project name. And we need to replace it with basically hash string uh, from the project ID or something like that. Uh, and yeah, probably there. So that's, that random. changes how deployment works. But if you look at how deletion works today is that we rename into a random directory and then we say rmrf that random directory. So I think that would more or less stay the same. But yeah, um, you, you need to, it, that, that, that would have to change. I think that is a change you can make uh, what, without having forcing people to migrate, like you can have a situation where, if the project has a public directory, you, know, you serve from that, and if it has uh, some sort of reference to a deployment, you serve from the deployment. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the migration, if we want to perform it, uh, it will be basically the same. It will be script which goes through uh, files we have on disk, and in the zip uh, case, it just packs them into zip archives and upload one file. And in your case, it just uploads all of them one by one. Yeah, so but the difference, the, is, the difference is that in the zip case, everybody has to run the script or else their old uh, sites get deleted once we drop support for the old sites. 
and in the loose file case, uh, not everybody has to run the script. People who don't no. want object storage don't have to do anything. No, no, I, uh, I guess, Camille, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I guess the Camille's idea was that if we ask people to do that, uh, we're not asking them to run this particular script. We're asking just uh, we're asking them to go to the project, to the pipeline view, and just press run the pipeline. That's all we ask from them. So and we we tell all the users of our customers that they need to do something, or we will delete their data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, but if we implement migration, uh, then in zip case, it's basically the same. We go through the current file structure, pack it in the zip archive, and upload. So, I mean, just in Camille's proposal, there is an option of not doing it at all and just ask users to press the new pipeline button. Uh, but uh, yeah, if we do migration, it's kind so, of the same. So, so Vladimir, I, I believe that this is like correct to both proposals. It's more like the, I guess, at that moment product decision, if we like want to reach the users to migrate the data or we want to implement a method to perform this kind of online migration. Uh, I mean, like, uh, like Jakob is saying that this is great task, but we could as well in the both cases just schedule as one of the deployments, uh, this packing to happen, schedule like a bunch of the side key jobs that would run like with very low uh, priority. And it would kind of could happen seamlessly to, to our on-premise users. This could be like additional option uh, to, like we could ask people to run the background task, migration or, 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 or like we could schedule background migration that would perform this task for them uh, to switch over into a new structure. Whether this is like if we pipe it into zip or if we Because people have artifact okay. storage anyway, like there's no way that people have a GitLab server and they cannot store their artifacts zip somewhere. Yes, the, the, they always store artifacts, right? So uh, it's kind of requirement. You, you cannot really not use. There's that. no there's no action required from the administrator to make it possible to to say where the zips need to go. No. So actually, like we have even fourth option. I guess it really depends on the. Uh, product decision, like how, how they would like to handle migration, we make it like more aggressive for github.com depending on our preference. But like in both cases, we have like basically like starting from the least trouble to us, ask people to rebuild the pipeline. That well, in, in the scenario in, I'm sketching, we don't have to ask users, people to do anything. People only need to migrate if they want to go from disk to object storage, but if they want to stay on disk, we don't have to run background migrations. We can just serve from the public folder okay. if there is no current deployment and otherwise we serve the current deployment. Well, okay. in, the con in the context, Jacob, in the context of .com, we are moving to Kubernetes and NFS support is going to get removed. So we would be asking customers, right, in that situation. Uh, well, our customers, on, you're talking about our customers on GitLab.com. Yes. Now, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm. Yeah. I sometimes yeah. when I think customers, I think self-managed. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's that's fair. Um, I think asking self-managed customers to migrate on their own terms and supporting both is a reasonable solution because those customers are probably invested in their NFS storage, and that's kind of you know like if we ask them to do that as part of the architecture, it's hard to ask them to immediately give that up uh, to just go to object storage. Now, if they choose to, then I think I think we're going to be in a transitionary state for a longer, much longer period of time. Dot com. Let's talk about dot com specifically. We would ask customers to to migrate. Um, um, we would. Well, we don't need to ask customers to do anything. It's like object storage is our job. We pay the bill for object storage. We we own the object storage bucket. It's an so infrastructure they concern. Take, they, they wouldn't have to take any action and be transparent to them. Well, that's actually one of the discussion points uh, yeah. because I'm saying it should be transparent to them because hosting GitLab.com is our problem, GitLab Inc's problem, and not uh are the customers the problem of the customers of gitlab inc uh, but in the proposal where we say people need to redeploy their pages sites before date x or we it will be deleted then we are making it the problem of our customers on gitlab.com to do that yeah which uh like we can also like handle pretty well uh in case of c because we could kind of 
perform this? Uh, yeah, our, our SREs software. would go in and run a script that looks at everything that is still left on the NFS disk that is not represented as a zip and make sure that it becomes a zip. Like, so let me ask this question. Uh, if we consider Jakob's proposal, is there any reason why we can't uh, eventually move to the zip solution later? Or is it is it like this is a one-way door decision? Like it feels like Jakob's proposal is almost like the precursor to, to switching architectural decisions. Like if, if I understand the situation correctly, but that's where I'm asking for clarification. Actually, it seems uh, like more complex. I mean, the idea behind Zip is to save us some time uh, because we already have these artifacts and already have way to handle them, uh, migrate and all the stuff. How much are we saving? Uh, how much? Or, yeah. yeah, how much? Uh, like, like I asked Nicole down there, like we're evaluating a solution here and we're six weeks out from having that solution kind of in place now. I think Jacobs has the opposite one, which is uh, performance maybe like, you know, that's the question is which, which, which one would be the more performance solution? My impression is, is the zip solution in theory would be more performant um, uh, for, for certain things. I actually I guess... expect it to be the opposite, uh, the other way around, because um, with the zip file, you, um, you, need, you need random access to somewhere inside the zip file. So you need some sort of thing that tells you where to go. And with object storage, uh, the name of the blob is the random access. You say, I want this blob, and it's the problem of the object storage platform to give you exactly that thing. So with the zip, we need to say, well, we have one zip, and this is a virtual file system, and we know now know where to go inside that virtual file system. And how do we know where to jump? And this is something that is not, this is a bit technical, but this is not quite clear to me how that works. Yes, so, so there is, uh, yes, very small performance penalty on, on having this structure. And, but as long as you have the structure, there is no really any meaningful impact on the actually serving the data. What uh, happens if a zip has a lot of files in it? Because the way I understand it, you have a list of everything that's in the zip. And if you want to find something, you need to first read that entire list. So if you have, if you have a zip with a thousand things, that takes so long. And if you have a hundred thousand things, that takes more time to read that entire list of a hundred thousand things. You would read that entire list on every every request. The user loads page on pages, and we read that oh. whole list. No, we we would be caching that. I actually checked GitLab.com, and within like sixty second period, we access around one thousand unique domains. So, like that amount, if you would take let's say one to ten thousand files per, per like given pages, is like fully manageable for us to to have some kind of LRU cache. So pages would remember in its memory where to go inside the zip file. For the short period of time to kind of catch uh, these very, uh, let's say, close by requests. Uh, the, so so, so I, I mean, th this is a design choice. Uh, because if you, would, if you would read, because we have GitLab ZipCut, but GitLab ZipCut does that every time. It, it would suffer. Well, that, so. to get up zip cut leads, leads, that's what we do on Workhorse, so maybe for other people in the call. Yes. Uh, Camille and I both worked on artifacts a long time, so we know a bit how it works. Uh, you can get a single fi file out of a CI artifact zip already, but uh, this is not fast because it must read that entire list of everything that exists in the zip before it knows where to go. And that's Richard. why I'm asking how we're making it faster this time around. Which is which is very tolerable for various reasons. One, like you do it every time. Second, it's a flat list. Third, if you perform a search, it's an ON type of search. So it, it's bad for various reasons. Yeah. But, so but if, if you if you do the obvious thing, that that is terrible performance. So you're telling me you've invented you you've come up with a different way of doing this. I, and, I mean, like 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 we read the central directory. We keep it in the cache for a limited period, but as soon as, soon as you have the cache and you have the offset, then as for the actual access to the file and the performance of accessing, it could be like a single request because you have exact place from where you have to read the data. This data contains header and then right after there is a data that you yeah. have streamed. So, so for every site that we're serving, Pages has a list of all the files on that site 
uh, or it builds that in memory, and then once it has that in memory, it can serve requests uh, fast. Exactly. So uh, th this is why Vladimir asked about the public, because we may want to cut amount of the files being there. We may want to optimize at least to conserve memory. There are like different ways to kind of approach that uh, really. Uh, it, it's kind of like uh, something to further optimize, I guess, because there are different ways. But the main way to alleviate the problem that we both know with the GitHub zip cut is to basically catch that. It's like 30, 60 seconds is just enough. Then next time you read the zip central directory within a single request, really, from the zip archive, uh, and you serve the file as you have the cache, uh, it's like you serve the file as you would be serving directly, really, because you, you serve, like you fetch the data, you fetch the exact branch that you are interested in. Uh, within that zip. Yeah, it sounds like it would help, but it also sounds still sounds to me like that with object storage, you don't even have that first step where you need to build that entire list and cache it because that is the problem of the object storage platform to make sure that if you ask for one thing that they give you that one thing quickly. Yes, and, and, and I fully agree. Uh, and there is a, a small uh, thing, but also there is very interesting aspect of that. You always hold the source data. If we at some point figure out that this is not performant to our expected scale, you could basically start unpacking that and, and serve in your style. Because we would always have the source data and we could always migrate away from the zip into more efficient structure. Uh, I, and to, to, to go back to Christopher's question, I think both things can go either way. They're both two-way doors. So just kind of for sake of time Actually, here. Uh, if we go from the zip, sorry. That's OK. Um, I think some of this would be good to, to um, carry on further in async and the issue that we've linked at the top for this discussion. I, I wanted to make sure we had time to get to um, Christopher's question there with regards to um, a timeline for fleshing out Jakob's suggestion. Christopher, is there something you wanted to add? Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to get to is like, so let me, let me, let me go up a few levels. Um, lots of good details, lots of good trade-off decisions. It sounds like um, I'm still trying to get in my head what the advantages of the zip file solution are, and I'm not saying that's a, a bad idea. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, it's not crisp in my head uh, right now. Um, um, but you know, like the reason why the reason why this is getting evaluation is because um, we want to get .com to Kubernetes. To get to Kubernetes, uh, you can't have NFS support. NFS is a great tool. It's very valuable in a lot of situations. But if you want to use Kubernetes, it's not very, <laughs> a very good solution um, uh, from that perspective. So, so what we're trying to figure out is, is like how do you know how do we, how do we get there uh, the quickest? Uh, understanding the trade-offs to that you know we don't want to have. Uh, I'll I'll say super suboptimal uh, customer experience or um, uh, a, bad, uh, a bad migration, right? So like those are, those are two things that we have to like also consider in that kind of exercise. So I think Jakob's proposal is reasonable on face value. And I kind of like, I'm seeing like uh, the proof of concept still six weeks out from really having us convinced of it. So I'm just trying to figure out like, you know, if we considered it, like, do we have an idea of like even just fleshing it out to convince ourselves it would work and then maybe executing on it? Cause like, that's the trade off I'm looking for is, 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 you know, I hear zip's gonna save time, but I don't hear how much, don't know if it's gonna work completely, still things to figure out. Um, you know, Yaga's proposal seems more straightforward, but I don't know what I'm trading off associated with that. So that's where I'm, I'm trying to figure out that aspect. Does that make sense everybody or am I? Yeah, I feel like I feel like the areas of ident that we've identified as being problematic is the uh, caching of um, file contents in the zip, which has come up in the workhorse. And then the other issue we're trying to determine is what, what we're asking of our users as they need to migrate into this new system. Um, you know, given that we get a caching system that works okay for the file structures within the zip, then, you know, that's the, one of the main problems. And we're on our way to doing this already. Um, it's already listed down and planned out. I think my concern with taking a POC right now is that we have pretty much one and a half people working on this, uh, this effort. And so we, I think it's important to determine 
are a really low cost evaluation. And if we really think both of these are two way doors and we're already working on one, stopping one and starting the other, it's just gonna like stop the whole effort and delay it further. So the timeline is really critical, which it is for our, <clears throat> excuse me, our migration for .com. Whether we can afford this time, whether infrastructure can deal with extra time, whether we can fit it in there is the critical part for me. And I'm really worried that whichever solution we go for, I don't know if we have capacity to do both at the moment. Um, and so that's more of a, a team staffing, sorry to use the staffing word, I know that's not ideal, but um, it's a team sort of a team commitment level. Um, so do you, Camille slash Jakob, do you think this is an accurate description of the points of concern as a really high level, obviously? I'm not trying to talk code. So um, I, I'm, I don't know what is the timeline, really. Um, I don't know that proof of concept that I saw was pretty decent. Uh, this is what I'm basing on. Uh, maybe it requires like three more times, but this is also proof of concept, but it was pretty complete from what I saw. There are of course always some concerns and in either of the solutions, we're gonna have to go through these concerns to, to make them production ready. So uh, both of them has the like implications on how you're gonna do stuff. Uh, as for the timeline, it's really hard to like answer to me that it's like conceptually because of the, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm fully biased. Conceptually, it feels simple to me, even if we include the caching. Uh, if, if we say that we pay extra memory to have like much bigger cache, like this is something that we could improve. I mean, either way, um, it's 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 not a deal breaker. It's some. It, I guess like our objective is like to get away from the NFS on the GitLab.com, and uh, I think in both cases we can achieve that. It just feels to me that I mean I'm just uh, zip. Uh, it's like simpler and removes a lot of deficiencies in that we have in the current process. Trades that a little for the performance in some aspects. Uh, but also removes a ton of complexity from the race application and the dependency on the race application. Um, so um, I, I'm kind of like looking at the, what we have. Uh, we have proof of concept that works. If we would focus on the proof of concept, probably in one or two milestones from now, we could be serving from the existing artifacts, like uh, alleviating the, the, the concerns about uh, whether we should be uh, storing data in that place or in that place which would be like a very great test for us to run because we could be start coding and learning performance characteristic. But then like you may have separate set of the people handling pages, I mean handling race site, which is like the life cycle of the object. You could then also have the separate set of the people handling this online seamless data migration that we discussed. Let's, let's pack this data into zip and like push that somewhere. I'm kind of like thinking that uh, it's uh, like the best to, to look at that problem is like how much of these things we can run in the parallel as for the engineering, because this could give us like much uh, higher turnaround turn around time. Because like, uh, I guess like it's, if this is high of the importance, like it could be like if we could tune three people to working on that concurrently, a different parts of that story, it would be more efficient because in the end we would meet in the central point of like providing solution in much quicker time frame. So uh, I would try to look exactly from the perspective, um, which would be like the faster to execute, uh, but taking into account that like, let's assume that we can take all resources that we can like, I don't know, uh, we, you mentioned like we have one and a half people. Maybe it would be me joining or maybe someone else from the memory team. How we could accelerate that? Uh, how, how we could make like work in the parallel to execute that faster, to have like this much higher turner, faster turnaround time to start testing these aspects. Because like uh, a lot of these things that like I, I mentioned about like latencies and performance, it's like based on my thinking, some, some testing, but Running on the scale on github.com is a completely different story and we have to kind of adapt to that. And the sooner we have something to test on, 
uh, it's gonna be better because we're gonna also have more time to optimize that to like to the grand finale, uh, I guess. So uh, I, I think there are like ways for us to to run these items. I mean, in both solutions in parallel to really make this tuner runtime faster. It really kind of depends on um, how one, how much time we want to invest into that and how quick we want this tuner runtime. Uh, I mean, I just, I personally feel that ZIP is simpler and removes a lot of complexity uh, that we have in the current architecture. It's not ideal, it's gonna require fine tuning, but also if we uh, better organize the process, we could actually have the time to this fine tuning uh, because we would ship the POC that we have. It would be good way for us to start testing what we have artifacts already that are zip. We would be able to learn the performance characteristic and what to optimize. But then it's like we could finish the rest of the stuff um, kind of concurrently to what, what we are doing. So, so uh, I, I mean, this is my perception about like that story. So just interjecting here, um, Camille, and that, that really is where we're at with the uh, POC for ZIP. And we do have a plan to do some of that work um, in parallel. But with uh, going back to Dan's point, I think taking people, the people we do have off of that POC to go proof out this other concept is just probably not wise at this point in terms of um, getting that idea flushed out. So if if we do want to explore that, Christopher, um, in terms of Jakob's suggestion, we would need assistance there uh, to Camille's well, it, point. It, it's my suggestion, so I should probably build something. <laughs> if, if we want to explore this, I'm probably the best person to uh, f flesh that out. We need to put uh, notes down now. Jakob yeah. just volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> <Excellent>. Committed. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> what did I just do? I am trying. <laughs> just, I am trying desperately to. There's an expre American expression: "Stay in your lane." I'm desperately trying to stay in the, my lane and not make that suggestion, Jakob. But yeah, no, but, uh, it is the obvious thing. We would appreciate just, the help. Like, uh, yeah. if, if there's a, if you think that. Uh, there's a way even you could get, you know, weeks worth of time and, and uh, accomplish enough that you think that that's a, a like, like ultimately uh, infrastructure is the consumer of, of some of this decision, though obviously our, our external customers are, but if we can keep it independent of that, um, you know, that, that definitely would help. help uh, I, I can put in some time and validate the idea. I, uh, I, I have a fairly good feeling like if I can get past a certain point, it's probably going to work. And if it, that proves hard, that it's probably a problem too. Uh, to answer the earlier question about which of these things to go for, um, I'm also biased. I think the <laughs> I think the loose objects idea is better, uh, but it's also late. Uh, we've been thinking about uh, the, the people working on this have been thinking about zip files for longer. It's just further along, which gives it a better chance of uh, being done sooner. Um, so. Yeah, and ultimately, I'm just um, I'm just a bystander here. I'm not on the release team. I'm not working on this. I don't own this decision. Helpful so, bystander, helpful bystander. <laughs> I hope I'm helpful, <laughs> uh, uh, but I it's just um, if I, I think the people on the the who, who own this are best able to judge. Is, is this going to work or not? Is this going to be faster or not? Uh, but intuitively, it's, it's, I, it, I think certain risks are lower. So on the long run, it might do better, but it's starting from behind. And how does that add up is very hard to say. Um, and uh, yeah. So I think, Jakob, the one thing that really jumped out at me in your description, and I, we're over time, so we probably need to wrap this up, but uh, is that yours, your solution really speaks to the, the experience of our self-hosted customers and helping those people have an operating system, uh, like an, a way to actually uh, keep using NFS if they want to, which as Chris yeah. called out is a really big investment. So it almost feels like our effort around zip is a little more focused around .com and your suggestion around actually giving people various options, whatever they like transparently, may be working better for self-hosted, although it works for everyone. I'm not suggesting it doesn't. Um, so it might make sense to focus around the gitlab.com solution around zip, as you mentioned, and then investigate this and determine whether it will work. And then we could actually have these side by side in some ways. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. So um, I, I'd like to clarify. Uh, 
I'm trying to find the right word. Uh, I, I mean, in both cases, it's going to work from object storage mm -hmm. or FS. It doesn't matter. Uh, the oh, okay. step is really like how you migrate the data and who does that, really. So um, it, like, it could be like what we discussed, the rake task, but it would kind of, what we do, it would also apply to the on-prem. Uh, and like, it, it, it doesn't really make a big difference. <laughs> well, I think yeah, the just... on-prem on difference is that uh, in this pro proposal I'm uh, suggesting is that people who don't care about this, who don't care about object storage, who are managing on-prem instances, never have to do anything. And uh, in the case of zip files, well, if we, do a, if we do a background migration, they don't have to do anything either, but uh, we would have to move data around in that case. I suppose, yes. now to be yes. fair, like if we use a background migration, that would also work, be transparent for people who don't want to be bothered with this. Yeah, I was going to say that these things all work together quite well, actually. But Christopher, you have a question. Yeah, I, like uh, Nicole wisely made the comment yesterday. We've had a lot of good discussion, but we need to move this to kind of async and kind of, it, I feel like we're almost there. Uh, now we can either decide right now, uh, who the DRIs are for the pros, or I'm sorry, we can either decide now what the pros and cons are and next steps, or uh, we can assign a DRI for that. And I'm, I'm okay with assigning a DRI if, uh, if folks are, but I'm asking who, uh, who's volunteering. And don't make me, a, don't make me decide. Because <laughs> I'll pick wrong. <laughs> um, I can take that and I'll work with, with Vlad to do that. Okay. All right. Um, what time frame do you think you can have that together? Um, I'm I'm going to try to get that hopefully uh, today because uh, I know Camille is going to be out for a bit, so we'll try to get that wrapped up. Yeah, this might be his last call for the day. So. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Camille, thanks for taking time on uh, your. I'm last I'm, I'm I'm out out for the next two weeks, so I'm not going to be able to help you out. But I think the team, Vladimir and like the GitHub pages team, they pretty know well uh, what is like the, the base story, base architecture behind that. There are maybe some quicks, but I think they are not really essential. So uh, I think yeah. they are in the good hands. They, they, they do what they want to achieve. <laughs> yeah, actually I'll try to put like a super small comment. I do agree with Camille that zip look a little simpler, but I don't feel like there is a big difference between these two approaches. And maybe even in the timeline, there's no much difference. Uh, so yeah, and I guess if we can just continue work on the zip and Jakob starts working on the POC for his proposal, after, I don't know, a couple of weeks, we probably can uh, pick the winner or something like that. Just see what works better. There are no winners in this. We're not, uh, we're not, this is not a competition. We're, we're working together to come up with a, a good solution. If it turns out that we can support customers effectively with both solutions, then we would choose that. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I, I, that's basically what I said. I, I guess we're both trying, solutions we're trying to figure out how to solve the problems so that uh, with the various trade offs associated with it. So, cool. don't, so we've got it as, as, a, as a, you know, it's okay if you, you and uh, Jakob compete in a game of uh, other things, but, but uh, as far as the technical decisions, let's. Let's try to keep it uh, even keel. Thank you. All right. Thank and you, everybody. The only thing that I can like uh, say, good luck, everyone, in trying out and getting this. <laughs> Enjoy your Wait. trip. <laughs> way to make us all feel scared again, Camille. Good work. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I said, way to make us all feel scared again. <laughs> good luck. See you. <laughs> I, I, I can help out when I get like freeze press after like my holidays so like. all, right. <laughs> all right thank you everybody take care bye bye